The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, Camtel, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I'm Baxel Tano Daniel, Computer Science Teacher. We are in Lower Six. Before we move into the lesson, we are going to do the correction of the previous assignment we had in our last lesson. The assignment was, explain the meaning of the statement. A stack is a lethal data structure. Explain the meaning of the statement. A stack is a lethal data structure. Lethal means last in, face out. It is an other place in which insertion and removal of element is done from only one end. That means we have a container where just one end of the container is opened. So insertion and removal of item into that container and out of that container is done from only one end. So LIFO in, LIFO mean last in, first out. The last item to be inserted, the first item to be removed. The question between top and pop. Top and pop are operations which are being carried out on a stack. Top is used to check and display which element is at the top of the stack. Why pop? is used to delete or remove the element at the top of the stack. Top is used to check and display which element is at the top of the stack and the element that was, that was added last to the stack. Why pop is used to remove or delete the element that is at the top of the stack. Element at the top of the stack the element at the top of the stack is the element that was added last. What is the output of the following stack equation? What is the output of the following stack equation? So, for this example, this assignment, we are going to illustrate on the board. So, assuming we have a stack with Let's say we have a stack of size 5. The first equation, push. Push 4, we are going to add 4 to our stack. The next, push 6. That 6. Our top, which is the element added last, now is at 6. So we have our top is at our top has a value 6. Next equation is push top plus 5. It means we have to push top plus 5, which is 6 plus 5, which gives us 11. Our new top now is at 11. The last equation is pop. Pop is removing or deleting the element which is at the top of the stack. So if we pop out our, if we, want it, if we do a pop operation, 
We are going to have a label. We are popping out a label. So our lesson for today is cubes. We are going to look at cubes. The plan for the lesson is objectives, because knowledge, the available application of cues, presentation of concept, exercises, and lastly, assignment. Objectives. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe a cue, implement a cue, describe operations on cue, state applications of cues. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe a cue, implement a cue, describe operations on a cue, state applications of cues. Notions on array, notions on data type, and notions on stack is needed. Previous knowledge you expected you to have basic notions on array, notions on data type, and notions on stacks. To better understand the lesson, we are going to we are going to look at a real life application that is a real life scenario where stack where cues are being applied. John works with an intercity agency, intercity transport agency. He's part of the team involved in ticket sales to passengers. The agency has had problems arranging passengers in a particular order during travel ticket purchase. John asks you, John asks you if you could help him with a model to arrange passengers in a particular manner during ticket purchase. So John is working for an intercity transport agency. It's an agency that provides transportation from one city to another. John is involved with the department involved with ticket C. But the agency has a problem. That is, whenever passengers come to purchase their bus ticket or their travel ticket, they are always in disorder. So now, the agency, through John, is asking you to help them get a model to arrange passengers in a particular order. You mentioned that he can use the principle of Q, Q data structure, to arrange their passengers. You are supposed to explain to John what a Q is and how to implement a Q. What's a Q? The first question is, what is a Q? A Q is a linear data structure that stores elements sequentially. A Q is a linear data structure that stores elements sequentially. It uses the FIFO approach. FIFO is first in, first out. FIFO approach, which, is, which means first in, first out for assessing elements. Data items stored first will be assessed first. So a Q uses a FIFO approach for assessing element, that is first in, first out. The data Data item that is being stored last or added last, data item that is being stored first or added first to the queue is being accessed first. That is, example, we have a container where both ends are open. You enter from point A and you leave from point B. So the first element, the first element to enter from point A, the first element should leave from point B because they are entered in a sequential manner. One end is always used to insert data. One end of the or Q is always used to insert data. And the other end is used to remove data. So both end of the queues of the queue is open. Insertion is done at one end called the red end of the queue. Insertion is done at one end which is known as the red. Whereas deletion or removal of items is done 
at the other end which is known as the front of the cube. So here we can see this our rear where we add element to the cube and this is our front where element leaves the cube. So we have our rear which is used to add I data items to our cube, while our form is used to remove data items from our cube. Example of cube. An example of a cube data structure is a line of people waiting to buy traveling ticket from a bus station, as mentioned in our real life scenario. A person will join the line from the end, and the person standing at the front will be the first to get the ticket and leave the line. Similarly, in a queue data structure, data added first will have to leave first. Example here is simply stating the scenario which we saw in our real life application, buying a bus, buying a ticket for a bus, from a bus station. We align the passengers stand in a line which is the queue, the first person, the first person at the beginning of the line will get the bus ticket first, while the person that joined the line last is going to get the bus ticket last. Another real world example of queues can be seen, it can be seen in a single lane, one way road. In a single lane, one way road. That is, we have just a single lane. So a road that is going just one way is single lane. So a road that is going just one way. If it was a vehicle enter, what was the vehicle enter that lane, it can't go behind, it must go to the end. So right here we have a single lane, one way road. We have the car, this the car at this position was the car that entered the lane first. So we have to leave the lane first, right? The car at this position, the car that entered the lane last, so you have to leave the lane last. Questions on stacks. Basic question on, on, on question on queues. Basic question on queues are NQ, DQ, peak, is full, and is empty. Basic question on queue include NQ. The queue is full, peak, and is empty. The first equation we'll look at is the Q and Q equation. And Q equation it is the process of adding or storing an element to the end of a queue. The process of adding or storing an element to the end of the queue. As we earlier said, Elements are being added just from one end of the queue, and that end is known as the rare position. So we add element into our rare position. We are going to look at the algorithm involved in the NQ process. The first, there's some, the algorithm can be broken down into different steps. First, we have to check if our queue is full or not. If our queue has a fixed size, a static size, if our queue has a static size which cannot be changed, if the queue is full, we will have to return an overflow condition. We know what overflow means from our lessons of stack. That is a situation in which our list is full but we are trying to add more items to that list. So if our list is full, we are going to run into an overflow condition. Next, okay. but if our list, if our queue is not full, we are going to update our rare position. We will illustrate with an example from the board to get to understand where okay. we have our queue such as this. Our queue, we have a size of five. At this point, we said that we we'll start setting data items at this point. So we have here we have let's say we have two, we have four, we have six, 
and we have A. The size of, at this point, this is the red point of a cube. This is the red, and this is the front. Our company said red. If the list, if the key is not full, then our red will be equal to red plus one. At this point, our main temperature we have zero, one, two, three. No, this number we have one, two, three, four. Red plus our question red is at position four. But if our Q is our Q is not full, we need to increment our red. Our new red now will be four plus but we should be at five. Means we are changing our position. Okay. We'll leave this here, we'll call this red O, and this will be our new red. Next a Q at position red is equal to data. That is we are inserting our new element into the new red position. We are going to insert 10 at position 5. So this is the algorithm to the processes involved in adding elements into a cube. The cube is a process of removing or accessing an element from the front of the cube. The process of removing or accessing an element from the front of the cube. An elevation element, the titles are being added at the rear and being removed from the front. The algorithm involved in the cube. The algorithm involves the decurring equation is same as for the NQ equation. We begin by checking if our Q is empty. If our Q is empty, we are going to return an underflow condition. The underflow condition as we saw in our last lecture situation in which our list is empty, but we want to remove data items from it. Next, data is equal to Q at the position front, at the front position. So we are going to use the same example we had on board. So the element which we are taking off, which is data, which is found at Q front, our front here is at index one. So we want to remove the element at that index. So we are taking off two. We are taking off this. We are taking it off. After taking it off, we need to change our front. That is, we need to modify our front position. Our new front now will be our previous front plus one. We need our, our new front position now will be our previous front, which is zero, which is one, plus one. It means our new front now will be our new front now will be at this position. This is going to be our new front. So we have seen and queuing, adding the data items to the top of our queue or the red position, decreeing, removing data items from the front of our queue. So we look at peak is full and is empty. Peak is used to get the element at the front of the queue with without removing it. So P is used to get the element at the top, at the front of the Q without removing it. Don't confuse, the Q is removing the element totally, whereas P is just to get the element, you check the element, you verify the element, 
the element stage where it is. You don't remove the element, you don't delete the element. If full, it's used to check if the queue is full. It's full, it's used to check if the queue is full. It's empty. It's empty, it's used to check if the queue is empty. Peak is used to get the element at the fall of the queue. Peak, is, peak, peak in queue is the same as top in stack. It's full, it's used to check if the queue is full. It's empty, it's used to check if the queue is empty. Data access and storage in a queue. How do we access and store data in a queue? We access data pointed by the front pointer. We access data that is being pointed by the front pointer. Data is stored in the queue by use of the red pointer. In our next lesson, we are going to look at pointers. So, we access data pointed by a phone pointer, and data is stored in the, in the queue by the use of the red pointer. As so earlier said, the element that was the element that was added first stays in the front position, and the element that was added last stays in the rear position. Element, data can be added from the rear position and they are being removed from the front position. Queue implementation. There are several ways, there are two main ways in which we can implement a queue. There are two main ways in which we can implement a queue. First, we have the sequential allocation and the linked list allocation. We use a sequential allocation and the linked list allocation. Sequential allocation, what does it mean? It can, a queue can be implemented using an array. So we use an array to implement a queue. With, this, with sequential allocation, the size of the queue is fixed. Because it is an array, so we have to define the size of that array. Which helpful means that the size of our queue is static and fixed. A queue implemented using an array can organize only a limited number of elements. A queue implemented using an array can organize only a limited number of elements. It has a fixed size. Drawbacks of sequential allocation. It is not flexible, it is not a flexible way of creation, as we have to define the size, we have to define the size during design, which can pose a problem. It is not too efficient with respect to memory utilization. Linked list allocation. So the second, the second way you can implement a queue is using linked list. It can be implemented using a linked list. A queue implemented using a linked list can organize an unlimited number of elements. Because in this situation, the size is not fixed. The size is dynamic. It can be changed at will. The size is generated automatically. Once you add a new element to the queue, it generates a new size for the queue. Application of queues. Application of queues. As we, have, as we all know, at this point, a queue uses the first in, first out approach, which we can use in softwares and even in our real life scenarios. 
we will look at how we can apply queues. Queues are widely used as waiting lists for single shared resources like Quinta, ZX, CPU, ETC. Queues are widely used as waiting lists for single shared resources, for single shared resources like Quinta, ZX, and CPU. CPU, ETC. Queues are used in asynchronous transfer of data. Where data is not being transferred at the same rate between two processes. For example, in pipes, file input and output, and socket. In all these examples, it only involves involve situation in which the in what situation in which the arrival of processes and tasks determine how those processes and tasks will be executed. The process that arrives first to the printer or the CPU or the disk will be executed first. Queues are used as buffer in most of our applications. Queues are used in the operating system for handling interrupts. Queues are used to maintain the playlist in media player in order to add and remove the song from the playlist. If you create a playlist with your mobile device, your phone, and you set the play mode to you set the play mode to sequential, that is it plays the first song, it goes to the next song, it goes to the next song, it doesn't mix things up. The man, the order in which the playlist is being created, the song that was added first will be played first, while the song that was added last will be played last, unless you decide to control how the song will be played. To better understand the, all what you're seeing, we are going to look at some exercises. Explain what you understand by the term Q. Exercise 2. Differentiate between sequential allocation and linked list allocation. Explain the role of the operation in Q and the Q. What is a Q? A Q is a linear data structure where elements are, 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 all, are ordered in a special fashion. That is the first in, first out. Which means elements inserted first to the Q will be removed first from the queue. A queue is a linear data structure where elements are ordered in a special fashion. You use the first in, first out approach, that is the FIFO approach, where elements added first to the queue will be removed first from the queue. Linked list allocation uses linked list data structure to implement a queue, while sequential allocation implement the queue using arrays. So look at the difference between sequential allocation and linked list allocation. Sequential allocation leads to a limited number of elements. That is, the size is fixed, so it can contain limited number of elements, while with the linked allocation, the size is not fixed, it is dynamic. The number of elements we can receive is not defined. And Q, the difference between NQ and GQ. NQ is a process of adding an element to a queue. That is, the adding an element to the very position of our queue. Whereas GQ is a process of removing an element from our queue. That is, we are taking off the element that is found at the very position of the queue. To better understand all what we have seen, we are going to have some tasks in the form of assignments, which we are going to do. Explain the meaning of the statement. A queue is a FIFO data structure. Explain the meaning of the statement. A queue is a, a queue is a FIFO data structure. Differentiate between is empty and is full. Differentiate between a stack data structure and a queue data structure. So, in order for this lesson to be prepared. The following resources will reference and use in preparation of the lesson. Our next lesson will be on linked lists.
Una tege si ma tege yop, una tege minga ma tege nyum, una tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia niña ne injubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndom, esa kina bia jinki do, ma ne tambia niña ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike, Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia niña ne injo bia yen 